Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and in this video I want to talk about an important subject and one that can be one of the most stressful things to happen in the fish keeping hobby and that is when your fish get sick and particularly in this video we're going to talk about ick. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about what ick looks like. How do you know if your fish have ick? We need to talk very briefly about the life cycle of ick so that we can better learn how to treat it. And yes, we are going to spend some time talking about how we treat ick successfully. We recently had an ick outbreak in our fish room in one of our tanks. It's been a long time, years, since we've had ick. But I wanted to take this opportunity to explain how we treat it and how we got rid of ick in four days. So stay tuned. So I want to do this with a science perspective in mind. For those of you who don't know, I did a master's degree in biotechnology and chemical science. I have also done a graduate certificate in aquaculture and fish health. I teach microbiology and biology at the college level as an associate professor. And here I want to tackle this problem with some of the science as a background to better help us treat this ick parasite and get rid of it. If we go through this video and you realize my fish might not have ick, I did another video a little while back that was troubleshooting water parameters to determine if that's what's making your fish sick. I will put that in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. Highly recommend. Take a look at that video if you're having issues and it turns out not to be ick. The other thing that I would strongly recommend is after we get through this process, I did a video on how to quarantine fish. That'll also go up in the right hand corner as well as in the description below. Definitely worth checking out that video to prevent ick from breaking out if it happened in one of your display tanks. We certainly don't want that, ha that to happen again in the future. So check those out. All right, so how do we know if our fish have ick? I think the first thing that we should recognize is often ick is introduced in the tank from fish that are sick. So if you've recently added fish, this could be a day or two ago, it could be as much as a week or two, before fish will start to show the ick parasite. Now one of the telltale signs are white spots. You can see here these fish have white spots, but by this point the ick is already fairly advanced. Other signs that you should be looking for before the white spots, if you've got fish in the tank that typically don't go to the surface like quarry cats or some loaches and you find that they're constantly going to the surface looking for air, that could be an indication that there is ick because one of the first thing that ick will do is attack the gill tissue making it harder for fish to get oxygen. Even other types of fish that will spend more time at the top of the tank what's known as piping and that means they're gasping for air again because that ick parasite is hurting their gill tissue and you may not see white spots at this point. Other fish Typically things like mollies and guppies and platies, you'll see them with clenched fins and they'll start to do what I like to call the death wobble where they're kind of shaking their bodies back and forth, swimming in place, but their fins really aren't moving. That often is an indication that the fish are sick and sometimes that will indicate that the fish has ick even though they may not be showing those spots. There are other fish that I have found to be a real telltale sign that ick might be present in your tank. In my experience, loaches tend to get ick relatively quickly. The other types of fish, I have found my gouramis. When gouramis have had ick, you'll start to see them just kind of sink to the bottom of the tank and not move. A lot of the barbs tend to get the white spots relatively early as well, and they start to do the flashing a little bit sooner than some of the other fish will. Now that flashing means that they're scraping against the rocks, they're scraping against plants, any types of decorations in your tank. And of course, as the disease progresses, now we start looking at the white spots. And at first, you might just see one or two or three, and it might only be on one fish. Please, if you hear nothing else in this video, it's so important. When you see ick, treat it right away. Don't hesitate. Often, I think for some of us, we want to just hope that the problem goes away on its own and that everything's going to be okay. But I'm here to tell you that the ick parasite, think about this now, we're in a closed system, a fish tank. It's not like it is in nature. The ick parasite, as we're going to see, it can replicate very rapidly and the fish have nowhere to go to escape this parasite. So pretty soon one fish has it, and then two, and then what seems like just in a matter of a couple days, all your fish are covered with white spots, and the longer you wait to treat it, the bigger the problem is gonna be, and the more fish loss you're gonna have over time. 
Now, as we're talking about disease, one of the things that I highly recommend if you are a fish keeper and you're into reading about fish and fish disease is this. This is the Fish Disease Diagnosis and Treatment. This is a textbook. This is actually a book that I used when I was doing my master's cert in aquaculture and fish health, written by Noga. He is one of the pioneers of fish disease. Fantastic book. I will put a link down in the description below, affiliate link down in the description below, in case you're interested. That book is actually an older version. I have an updated version on my iPad. I find it incredibly helpful for troubleshooting, ick disease or other types of infectious disease or how to treat certain diseases. It is a very thorough book, certainly worth the time. Again, that link will be down below. Life cycle. Let's talk about it very briefly and then I promise we're going to get right into the treatment options. What we need to know about ick. Often when you're seeing the white spots on the fish, you might just see one or two. What's really happening there is that ick parasite is actually burrowing into the epithelial tissue, the lining of the fish itself and it's actually getting into the tissue, and at that point you will see an immune response by the fish, and that's what really what we're looking at with that white spot. The more ick parasites that are connected to the fish, the more white spots, and some of those white spots will actually combine together and look like larger white spots. After the ick parasite has fed off the host, off the fish, it's going to release itself from the host, it's going to fall to the bottom, where it's going to encapsulate, and there it's going to go into its reproductive mode. When it's in the substrate or connected to plants or decorations, it can produce hundreds of offspring. Those hundreds of offspring are modal. They consume around the tank using cilia, and they find their next host another fish, or maybe it was the previous fish that was infected. What we need to understand is that life cycle is highly dependent upon the temperature of your fish tank. Now, knowing that the life cycle of ick is dependent upon temperature can really help us in treatment options. So what's interesting is that for the most part when we keep tropical fish right around 75 to 77 degrees, the ick life cycle, what I've just explained from going from one host down into the substrate and back again, takes anywhere from around three to seven days. But as the temperature decreases, by the time we get into around 60 degrees Fahrenheit, that life cycle might increase anywhere between 10 to 14 days. If you go even cooler, let's say into the 50s, now you're looking at weeks, if not a month or more. Now, you might be thinking, great, all I have to do is turn down the temperatures and the ick parasite will have a harder time replicating and that's a great way to treat the fish. Seems logical, except what we're actually going to do is use this knowledge and turn the temperatures up. Why would we ever want to increase the life cycle of a parasite that's going to kill our fish? Because in a few moments, I'm going to talk about the meds that we use to treat disease. And what's important to understand about many of the antiprotozoals that we use here, or antibiotics that we would use for bacteria, they actually work better as the parasites or as the bacteria are growing faster. So when we realize we had it, when I realized we had it in the 125 gallon tank that we're looking at, the very first thing I did was turn up the temperature. Now, we have a little bit of an issue here because we heat the fish room. In our fish room, our tanks are right around 78 degrees. We need to get that temperature up. I'm not going to turn the temperature up in the entire room. So I dropped a couple heaters in and that's what you're seeing in this 125. Over the course of about 24 hours, I raised the temperature from 78 degrees all the way up to around 83 to 84 degrees. It parasite has been shown that it really can't survive in temperatures over 86. So we're really not raising the temperature quite enough to kill the ick parasite. What we are doing is greatly speeding up its life cycle where I said before we were somewhere in that three to seven days. Now we might be a day or two and that's going to help us treat it in a moment. So if, if your fish can handle the increase in temperature, we might want to get that temperature up somewhere around 83 or 84. Now, if you have goldfish or you have goodyids or some cool water fish that can't handle those temperature increases, that may not be an option. If you have a heavily planted tank with some sensitive plants, that also may be difficult for the plants to adjust to. Now, for our purposes, in the tank that we're treating, we really just have jungle val and crips, some anubias, some java fern. And I have found, at least for the amount of time that we're going to increase the temperature in these tanks, which will probably be somewhere in the two week range, they handle it just fine. At least the, the plants that we have. Your plants may or may not. 
one of the things you may have to decide is what's more important, saving the fish or saving the plants. But we raise our temperatures 83 to 84. If you have cool water fish, that may not be an option for you. So what's the next thing that we're gonna do? Salt. If your fish, if your ecosystem can handle extra salt, it is a really good idea to add it. Now we use aquarium salt. I will put an affiliate link down in the description below in case you need salt. It's good stuff for ick. It can be very effective. Studies have shown that the ick parasite doesn't really survive well when it's in an environment over one part per thousand salt. So what we do is we basically almost double that concentration and a lot of fish can handle that. What that means is we're generally using a tablespoon of salt for around every two and a half to three gallons, provided that our fish can handle that amount of salt. So for us, fish where it would be a no-brainer are things like guppies and mollies and African cichlids. They don't mind it at all. Other fish may not like that increased salt concentration. Now for the tank that we had, sometimes we'll back off a little bit and maybe use one tablespoon per five gallons in some of our tanks. For the tank that we just treated, there's plants in that tank. And I really don't wanna kill the plants. So what we did is we added one tablespoon per 10 gallons of salt. If you're adding one per two and a half to three gallons, that's gonna get you about two parts per thousand. If you're doing it one per five gallons, it's roughly approximately about one part per thousand. And again, we're dealing with an, a, a, an osmotic pressure where the ick parasite really can't deal with that extra salt very well. Now there have been people who have treated ick just by raising the temperature and increasing the salt concentrations. However, I have found that most of the time, by the time we realize we have an ick problem, the ick is fairly well advanced, or maybe we have fish that don't tolerate salt very easily, or maybe we've got plants. I personally always, always, always use medication. But the salt is a fantastic option and one that you should absolutely employ if your fish and ecosystem can handle it. So what else is the salt going to do? I already said it's gonna make the ick parasite very uncomfortable, but it does other really awesome things for the fish. Thing number one is it's going to allow the fish to osmoregulate. In other words, it's gonna allow the fish to control how much water is in its body a little bit easier. Understand that as these ick parasites are attacking the fish, yes, it's destroying the gill tissue, but it's also destroying the epithelial tissue on the outside of the body. And that epithelial tissue is what's keeping the fish protected from its environment. Fish may also become more prone to other types of secondary infections like bacterial infections. This is also where the salt comes in handy because what the salt is going to do is allow the fish to produce more mucus. That's slime coat on the outside of the fish. If you've ever touched a fish, you know it's pretty slimy. That's mucus, it's supposed to be there. It protects the fish for two reasons. In my microbiology class that, we, that I teach, I talk about mucus as a physical barrier. You've got the, the outside of the fish facing the water, and then you've got the environment where the ick parasite is. The mucus is kind of like a layer, of course it's not solid, but the mucus is a layer that's separating the outside environment from the surface of the fish. The more mucus that fish produces, the more protection it has from the ick parasite. But there's something else about that mucus that is vital, and that is the mucus secretes antimicrobial chemicals. And now, because there's more mucus, there's more antimicrobials, which is gonna make it harder for that ick parasite to burrow into the fish, to get into the epithelial tissue, and feed from the surface of that fish. A couple other things before we get into the meds that, are, that I think is super important. As we increase the temperature, we are decreasing the amount of dissolved oxygen in that water. It's gonna make it harder for the fish to breathe, and as we've already mentioned, that ick parasite is also attacking the gills. So now we've got two things that are making it harder for the fish to obtain oxygen. And what we wanna do is make sure we've got proper water movement in that tank, proper surface agitation, so that the fish can get as much oxygen out of that water as possible. Now I am not saying put a power head on your five gallon tank and blow your betta all over the place. What I am saying is maybe it might be a good idea to add an air stone or two just to increase water movement, increase surface agitation, so that more dissolved oxygen is getting into the water, making it easier for your fish to breathe. 
The second thing I would do is maybe relax on the lights a little bit. Now I understand if you've got a planted tank, you don't want the plants to die. I mean, you're already raising the temperatures, adding salt, you're gonna be adding meds, but it might be a good idea, especially if you don't have a planted tank, turn the lights off more often. I'm not saying you have to keep the tank in the dark all the time, but it might be a good idea, let the fish relax. I mean, think about it, when we're sick, do we really wanna be outside? Do we really wanna be in a crowded place where it's well lit and there's a lot of activity? No, most of the time we just wanna to go to bed with a blankie and maybe our YouTube, and that's about it. Your fish are the same way. They don't have YouTube, but they do wanna relax. So maybe turn the lights out a little bit longer for them, let them just chill out. The other thing that you might wanna consider is how much you're feeding your fish. Let's face it, if your fish are sick and they're not eating, there is no point in trying to feed them multiple times a day just to watch the fish food go to the bottom of the tank and now we've got water quality issues on top of the parasite. So watch the feeding. If your fish are eating aggressively, feed them. If they're not really eating the food, back off a little bit. For us personally, even if they are eating, I still back off a little bit just because I wanna make sure our water quality is okay. The meds that we're gonna talk about don't really mess with the, the cycle too much in our tank. However, I really don't wanna have water quality issues as we're treating. All right, so let's talk about the medications because I believe it's a vital component of properly treating ick. We've already talked about temperature and salt and increasing oxygen. We do that right away as soon as we think we have a problem with ick. Now, there are a ton of meds out on the market. In my personal opinion, only two of them do I really trust, and I think quite a few are actually just complete garbage. Now, the first one, and one of my absolute favorites is this. This is ICX. By the way, Aquarium Co-op, Corey, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for sponsoring this video, for getting us these meds right away. If you've got a problem with ick, this stuff is awesome. Aquarium Co-op is the place to go. They get it. They get it when you're ordering meds, whether it's antibiotics or general cure or this stuff, you probably need it right away and they're gonna get it out to you fast, right? This is just awesome stuff. I would highly recommend, check them out. I will put Aquarium Co-op's website down in the description below. Now, here's what I love about ICX. There's actually a couple things. Uh, thing number one, the active ingredients in ICX, uh, for the most part, is malachite green and formaldehyde, and those two chemicals work synergistically to destroy ick. Now, I mentioned already that we want to keep the lights off a little bit more often, and that's especially true if you're using ICX because some of the active ingredients here become denatured a little bit faster when we've got the lights on for longer periods of time. I'm not saying you have to leave your fish in the dark for another week or two. I am saying if you can reduce the light cycle, that would certainly be helpful to keep this medication working its best. Follow the directions. It's relatively straightforward, about five mLs per 10 gallons of water. That's what we do. It works really well. Uh, they give you the suggestion if you're gonna add another dose, do a 30% water change, and then go ahead, go ahead and add another dose. What we did, again, we got rid of our ick in four days. We dosed this every day, did the water changes, and everything worked out great. Now, the other thing I really like about ickx is the fact that if you've got shrimp, or snails, so any type of invertebrates or plants, this is gonna be a relatively safe medication to use. We've used it in tanks with invertebrates. We are using it in tanks with plants right now. Never had an issue. Uh, so this is a great thing because it's a little bit less toxic than the other medication I'm gonna mention in a moment, but it works very, very well. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind is ICX, because it uses malachite green, it has the potential to stain some of the stuff in your tank green. Maybe that's the silicone. If it's a lighter colored silicone, that could be some of the decorations. Now, to be clear, I have never actually seen that happen. So I know that it can happen. I've used malachite green for other reasons in microbiology, but I just haven't seen it stain anything in my aquarium, at least not to the point where I noticed it. So it's not really a concern uh, of mine. It will stain carpet, it will stain your clothes. If you're using any fish medications, it's always a good idea, any chemicals at all, it's always a good idea to wear gloves and be aware of what's going on around your eyes. I know some people will actually use safety glasses when they're handling ick meds or any type of fish medication or testing kits for that matter. But this is a great thing. The other medication that I have used that works is Copper Safe. Uh, it is a different medication, it's using copper instead of malachite green, so you're gonna have a couple issues. One, do not use that if you've got a planted tank. Don't use it if you have invertebrates. And understand, 
that the copper meds can be a little bit more toxic to your fish than Ikex. But the copper meds definitely work. I have had very good luck with them. And so maybe if I'm treating cichlids or a hardier fish, that might be a go-to option if I don't have the Ikex on hand. And again, that's another one where you just follow the directions. It's somewhere around the five milliliter is about what you wanna do for per about four or five gallons of tank water. Now that's one where you typically don't redose it like you would with the Ikex. That is tends to stay active for a number of weeks unless you do a water change. Now in either case, if you're doing a water change, you're gonna to wanna to redose the Ikex. You can redose it as the directions stay for the copper safe. You just wanna make sure that your concentrations are the same as before you did the water change. So let's say you add your copper safe and you have a 10 gallon tank, you empty out half the water, do a 50% water change. Well, then you're gonna to wanna to add a half a dose and that will bring the concentration back up to its original. So both of them are great meds. Now I will definitely put an affiliate link down in the description below for the Copper Safe. It's a great med. Again, just be careful with it because it's a little bit more toxic, but that will be down there as well. Now what we do, just to be on the safe side, I really don't like dealing with ick. I'm not sure anybody actually enjoys it, but when ick occurs, we use the meds, we do the temperatures. Once it's cleared, once I have seen the last white spot on any of the fish in my tank, I'm going to continue medication for at least a week after the last white spot has been seen. And I'm actually gonna keep the salt concentrations and the temperatures at their treat, treatment levels for about two weeks. And the reason I do that is I wanna make sure that any of the ick parasites that have remained are gone. Understand this when it comes to treatment with medications. The, medis the medications, whether it's ICX or copper safe or just about anything else, they only in impact the modal forms of the ick parasite. So when the ick parasite is burrowed into the fish, the medications really don't work. When the ick parasite is in the substrate and it's encapsulated, the ick medications really don't work. And so the ick meds work as those parasites become modal and they're looking for their next host, that's when they're impacted by the ick meds. So we have to understand that, of course, we have a life cycle to deal with. We turn the temperatures up, that life cycle's really fast. And so maybe, you know, waiting a week, you know, before you deal with the meds after the last white spot or temperature or the salt, that might be a little bit long, but I like to stay on the safe side. Now, if you're dealing with cooler water fish, like maybe say goldfish, and now we're dealing with a possible 10 or a 12 day life cycle, you may have to leave that ick, those ick meds in for two, three, maybe even four weeks after you see the last white spot, again, just to make sure you've cleared them all. The last thing we want is for some of the ick parasites to break that capsule in the substrate or off a plant or maybe even in your filter a few days after you stop treatment and now guess what you see? You're back to square one again. And by the way, if you stop treating your fish and all of a sudden you see white spots again, you have to go through the entire treatment process from day one once again. So I really, really want to make sure that I don't have any issues. Now, as I said, when I cleared the ick parasite, it took me four days and all the white spots were gone. However, the ick medications stayed in the tank at, at therapeutic levels. The temperatures are still up. The salt concentrations, at least for the planted tank, I went one tablespoon per 10 gallons. I'm leaving it that way. The ick meds for an extra week, salt and temperature for two. And I want to make sure I'm not dealing with this problem again. Now let's talk about a couple other things that I think are really important but often forgotten. First, any nets, any hoses that you put into that tank, please don't use them in another tank. That is a great way to sp spread the ick parasite. We've done it before and it is not fun. If you think ick in one tank is bad, try having it in two, three, or four different tanks. That gets really stressful. So any net, any hose, put that aside. It is only to be used in that tank. Now, eventually you will be able to use the nets and hoses and other tanks again. What I do is the nets, once I'm done using them, they go in a 10% bleach solution for a couple days and then I pull them out, I'll rinse them off and then I set them aside and I let them dry. And I will let them dry, set them aside for a week or two. Will they dry after a day or two? Yes, but again, I don't wanna deal with this problem again. So they sit off to the side for at least a week. The hose, same thing. What I do is I set it aside. In fact, our hose right now is sitting off to the side and we're only using it for that tank and it's well away from anything else we would ever use to interact with any other tank. 
Once the ick parasite is gone and I'm comfortable that we've cleared it and I'm turning the temperatures back down and I'm doing water changes to get the meds out and to return the salt concentrations back to normal, that hose will then, I'll fill up a, ten, a five gallon bucket full of 10% bleach solution. I'll run that bleach solution through the hose. I'll stop the water, make sure it soaks in there for a little while, run all five gallons through and guess what I'm gonna do with that hose? I'm gonna set it aside make sure it completely dries for the next week or two, and then it'll be safe to use in other tanks. The ick parasite cannot survive the drying process. It doesn't like the bleach, of course, but that drying process, that will usually destroy the ick parasite. So that's what we're doing with the notes, the, the hoses and the nets. The other thing that you're gonna to wanna to do as you do these water changes, do a gravel vac, especially if you don't have plants. Remember, this ick parasite has fallen to the substrate. It, yeah, it might be connected to your plants. It might get caught up in the filter, but a lot of them are in the substrate. So go ahead and gravel vac your tank because you're physically removing some of those ick parasites. All right, everyone, I hope you found this useful. I hope if you've got ick right now, you're able to successfully treat it. I would love to hear from you in the description below. If you use these methods, how did it work for you? We do lots of videos just like this, so if you found it useful, share and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.